Well, welcome to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to be talking about my old alma mater, Wheaton College, Illinois, and some of the craziness that is going on down in Wheaton, Illinois. Now, I haven't been on campus for probably a, at least a couple decades, but as to what I'm hearing and the reports that are coming out of Wheaton College, this college has gone social justice warrior woke to the max. They have taken over the campus and you have people running around looking for microaggressions, looking for anything that they can cry wolf over and they have found something on campus and it has prompted an investigation and there has been a committee informed and the president has sent a letter out to everyone, the alumni and the Wheaton community. And there's a crisis brewing at Wheaton College over this issue. And what is the issue that the crisis is brewing over? It is none other than a plaque that is hanging in Edmonds Chapel, which is the big chapel, Edmond Chapel. Everyone goes to chapel, and when I was back in my day, we had to go, I believe it was four times a week. I'm not even sure if the students have to go to chapel anymore there, but they do usually uh, have to go at least once or twice, at least last I've heard. That could have been changed, but there is a plaque, there was a plaque in Edmonds Chapel, and this plaque was supposed to be in honor of the missionaries that were sent out from Wheaton College a few decades ago, actually 65 years ago. And here is what is in that place right now. Let me go to a video clip. Let me go to a shot of this. There is the place where this plaque was in Edmonds Chapel. And now, and now it is just a blank wall and they're going to edit out certain offensive words in the plaque commemorating missionaries who gave their life to the cause of Christ 65 years ago. Um, and they're going to now, that plaque is going to be taken down, as you see here, and it's going to be edited to remove offensive language in the plaque. And I'm going to look at some of that offensive language here in just a second. But if you think about all of the pressing needs of the world today, and if you think of all of the pressing uh, issues that Wheaton College could be upset about and uh, involved with, you think of, for example, the terrible holocaust of abortion that every year millions of babies are being slaughtered in the western world and thousands tens of thousands of little babies minority babies babies of color black hispanic asian every conceivable ethnic group is aborting their babies in our western nations right now and on top of that um, you can think of these abominable uh, laws that have been passed and court decisions that have been rendered in the last five years. We think of, for example, the so-called Gay Marriage Act, where now in the United States and in most Western nations, you have two men or two women uh, able to marry, you know, profaning the whole institution of holy matrimony, profaning that. You would think that Wheaton College would be an up in arms about that. They never have been. They've never been up in arms about abortion. Uh, all of this transgender movement now where even our president, Joe Biden, is saying that he, he thinks an eight-year-old child should be able to make the decision to... Uh, cut off or operate on their body to try to transform themselves into the member of the opposite sex. All of the immoral depravity that's going on in our world, you would think Wheaton College would be up on that and they would be uh, in the forefront because after all, this is the flagship evangelical educational institution, supposedly. But no, Wheaton College 
is preoccupied with plaques that are hanging in the chapel uh, so that students might not be offended at what they see here. And I'm going to look at an article from the Daily Wire here that talks more about this. It will get a, get a feel for the craziness, the insanity, the silliness of, tri- it, it, of taking something so trivial. This is a plaque. The wording of this plaque was put there 65 years ago. And there are supposedly faculty and students and administration people who are offended by the language here. Let's read the Daily Wire's article. It says, Wheaton College removes plaque honoring martyred missionaries because it used the word savage. Yes, that's right, savage. That's so offensive. No, it's not offensive. It could be offensive, possibly, but so what? We, we, we have to learn how to look at historical references. We have to learn how to, to read books that were written before the last 25 years, and we have to put them in their context, and we have to understand them and in the, understand the historical milieu and understand the situation and not be all offended because these publications don't meet our standard of political correctness. Well, let's read on. It says, it says, a Christian college in Illinois removed a plaque commemorating a group of martyred missionary alumni because it used the word savage to describe the members of an indigenous tribe who speared them to death in Ecuador. So here is a group of uncivilized native Ecuadorians who were isolated from the outside world, and they savagely, we're using the word correctly, and brutally, I'm using that word correctly, and violently, I'm using that word correctly, speared peaceful, unarmed, white missionaries 60-some years ago, 65 years ago, and a plaque was put up in the commemoration of these missionaries who were also students of Wheaton College before they went to their missionary trip. And that is supposed to be so offensive that the president of Wheaton College has to contact all the members of the Wheaton College community, past, present, and say, we are going to do something about this terrible thing. And um, we are going to uh, put a committee together to study this and investigate this and really get to the bottom of this and spend so much time on something that doesn't need to be corrected in an adult world. It's almost like they're children over there. I'm so ashamed of my old alma mater in respect to this. They are buying into this politically correct, woke, uh, intersectionality, cultural Marxism. This is right out of the playbook of what we are seeing on secular colleges and universities, and it's really sickening. It's ridiculous. Wheaton College in Wheaton, Illinois, will be subjecting the plaque, which honors missionaries Jim Elliott and Ed McCulley, to a task force appointed by the school's senior administrative cabinet, which will determine how best to reword it according to an email that was forwarded to the Daily Wire and first reported by the Spectator. So there's a senior administrative meeting that took place, and there's going to be a task force appointed so that they can get the wording right, because this plaque is so offensive to students. What is it so offensive to students about? Yes, it wouldn't be something we would write today. Yes, it wouldn't be the wording we would make today. Yes, we would not go about restating the phrase savage the way they did today. But does that mean you have to then go back and try to rewrite things, to try to edit out things that someone someplace at some point said they didn't care for or or they claimed that was offensive? This is part of the over sensitive, twinky, snowflake, safe space, the whole thing. This is part of that whole movement. And now Wheaton College is bowing to the pressure of this social justice warrior, intersectionality, critical race theory, 
all of this is all wrapped up together and Wheaton College is now right in the middle of it. So disappointing. Here's what the letter said. Recently, students and faculty and staff have expressed concern about the language on the plaque that is now recognized as offensive. Offensive to whom? Uh, the, the people that this is describing were savages. Let's be clear and truthful about it. If you are a people, if you are a village who comes out with your spears and murders missionaries or murders people simply for showing up at a beach, you are a savage. You are violent. You are brutal. You are, and this is probably not the worst they did, that group. And to call them savage is perfectly correct. It is a description of what they were and what they did. And to call them something else, like these friendly tribesmen came out to meet the missionaries and promptly killed them. That would be totally inaccurate and false. And yet, I guess that maybe is something that would be put there on the plaque now that this study group is going to rewrite it. Specifically, the word savage is regarded as pejorative and has been used historically to dehumanize and mistreat indigenous peoples around the world. Well, it wasn't being used. The people who went to visit these people with the gospel of Jesus Christ were not there to exploit them. They were not there to colonize them. They were not there to dehumanize them. They were there to help them, to, to, to save their souls, to bring them the good news, to bring them light, to bring them truth, to bring them morality, and they were brutally murdered. We use the word savage today to describe someone who is excessively violent. There are savage murders that go on today, and that word is used. It's a current word. It's an active word. And what these tribesmen did to these unarmed, peaceful missionaries could be described as savage. So, yes, while we wouldn't write that plaque that way today, no doubt we would not call them savages. That is exactly what they were. And if you look back in the history of this group, this tribe, they were savages. And there's even books being written or have been written um, by the title something like The Savage, My Kinsman, The Savage, My Brother, because to show that even though people who are violent and brutal and bloodthirsty, even though that's what they were, they can be transformed by the power of God through the power of, of the gospel. And so, Yes, I don't find that this is an inaccurate description. For generations, all Christians were killed by these savages, savage Indians. Okay, here's what the plaque says. For generations, all strangers were killed by these savage Indians. So what that plaque said was that any visitor to this tribe was killed. For generations, all strangers, all foreigners, all outsiders, talk about xenophobia. This is an, a tribe that had xenophobia. For generations, all strangers were killed by these savage Indians. It's a descriptor. It's an adjective. Savage Indians, violent Indians, you could say, brutal Indians, murderous Indians, uncivilized Indians, because that is exactly what they were. After many days of patient preparation and devout prayer, the missionaries made the first friendly contact known to history with the Alcas. That is what the tribe was named at the time. The class of 1949 gifted the plaque to the school in 1957 to commemorate the slain classmates who were killed in 1956. So this was 
a plaque commemorating and honoring their own classmates, this class of college students, their own classmates went over there and were brutally, savagely, yes, killed by these uncivilized natives during their attempt to bring the gospel to the violent Huarani or Aka Indians. That's the new name of the tribe. In the rainforest of Ecuador, Elliot and Macaulay, along with Phil fellow missionary Nate Saint, Pete Fleming, and George, or Roger Yodorian, initially made friendly contact with the tribe and exchanged gifts for several months. So they were working with the people. They were working with the individuals in this tribe, this violent tribe. They wanted to bring the gospel to them, and they were making progress, seemingly. On January 8th, 1956, however, a group of Aka warriors fell upon them, spearing them to death and throwing their bodies in the river. So they not only killed them in a savage, brutal, bloodthirsty way, spearing them to death, but then they threw their bodies in the river, didn't even give them a, a burial. So yes, the, the moniker uh, savage is appropriate. I don't see what the problem is. Several years later, both Jim Elliott's wife, Elizabeth, and Nate Saint's sister, Rachel, traveled to Ecuador to live with and minister to the Akas who had killed their loved ones. It's quite a story. And when you get the historical perspective of what actually took place, the violent murder of these missionaries, and then the redemption that came later from members of their family to, to reach the tribe, Many in the tribe ended up converting to Christianity, including the warriors who had murdered the missionaries, and the tribe ceased being bloodthirsty. Okay, so they were savage. They were bloodthirsty. They were murderous. They were violent. That describes savagery. It is not a slur on these people. Jim Elliott's daughter, Valerie, and the Elizabeth Elliott Foundation responded to the plaque's removal in a statement to the Daily Wire. While we are saddened that the plaque honoring the martyrdom of Jim Elliott, Ed McCulley, Nate St. Roger Yodirian, and Pete Fleming has been removed from the Edmund Chapel at Wheaton College, we pray that the attention that this action is generating will bring renewed interest in the amazing work of God that was done in and through their sacrifice to God be the glory. So it doesn't say that the daughter of Jim Elliott, Valerie, and the Elizabeth Elliott Foundation, it doesn't say that they like this idea. It doesn't say that they approve of this or they think this is a hearty, a hearty endorsement on their part. No, it, it sort of... <coughs> I get the feel that Elizabeth Elliott's uh, daughter, Valerie... I get the feeling she's not real happy about this. And she's saying, well, okay, um, we're sad that they took down the plaque, but maybe something good will come of this and more attention to the actual events of history. Here is one of the missionaries shown with one of the Aka Indians who that person might have actually uh, murdered this man in a later event. The full text of the President Riken's letter reads, and then it goes on and talks about, uh, it says, I write regarding the plaque hanging in the lobby of Edmund Chapel that honors Jim Elliott and Ed McCulley, along with Nate Saint, Roger Uderian, and Pete Fleming, who were slain in 1956. In a heartfelt act of remembrance, Wheaton College, class of 49, gave the plaque to the college in 1957. And then he says, in the 64 years since the college received this gift, we have continued to grow in our understanding of how to show God's love and respect to others. Recently, students, faculty, and staff have expressed concern about the language on the plaque. It doesn't say how many students, faculty, and staff. It just says some. It actually implies that, you know, all of the students and faculty and staff have expressed concern. It's probably... If I, I heard other reports, it was probably less than a dozen. 
specifically, okay, in the language on the plaque that is now recognized as offensive. So again, offensive language. The offensive language police are out. Specifically the word, this is the same group that is going back and saying, we can't let our children read Little House on the Prairie because it calls Indians savages. Or we can't let them read Huckleberry Finn because it uses terminology we wouldn't today. We can't let our children read Dr. Seuss books because a few of those books have phrases in them that we wouldn't say today or whatever. It's the same mentality. Specifically, the word savage is regarded as pejorative and has been used historically to dehumanize and mistreat indigenous peoples around the world. Yes, it has, but in this case, it's actually a pretty good word to describe the Indians at that time. That's why that the missionaries were going there to try to save this primitive indigenous native people because they needed saving, not just spiritually, but actually morally. And I'm sure there were other missionaries all over the world that have saved similar tribes from a life of headhunting and cannibalism and brought them into the light of the gospel, which shows them that these are, these are bad things. Any descriptions on our campus of people or people groups should reflect the full dignity of human beings made in the image of God. Yes, that's true, but we shouldn't be so sensitive that we go around with our microscopes and our magnifying glass and trying to find things so that we can make an issue of them. That's what's happening here. With this in mind, the senior administrative cabinet will appoint a task force to review the wording of the plaque and to make a specific recommendation by May 1st for its careful rewording and replacement, subject to the final decision by the Senior Administrative Cabinet in consultation with the Board of Trustees. So this is a big deal about a plaque honoring missionaries. Members of the task force will include a faculty historian, a faculty missiologist, a representative from the Wheaton College Alumni Association Board of Directors, a graduate student, and an undergraduate student. So, full representation. What really should happen as Christians is the president should stand up in front of the faculty, staff, and students and say, we need to be thinking historically. and We need to understand people in the context of when they were writing and what they were saying and not jump to conclusions and judge people by our specific sensibilities in the present. We need to be historically sensitive. Talk about offensive. This is what should be an offense to any historical uh, person or historian because we are taking history and we're trying to rewrite it so that we feel good. Here's a better idea. When you write history now, Just incorporate all the sensibilities that you feel that should be incorporated and stop worrying about editing and rewriting people who have written in the past. The rewarded uh, plaque will carry forward the memory of Wheaton College of brave missionaries and their sacrificial witness while at the same time respecting the Wyoduni people with whom they shared the gospel of love of Christ. It will resume its place in the lobby of Edmund Chapel sometime this summer. Well, it should never have been taken down because this is getting to be ridiculous. Like I said before, with all of the crises that are going on in our world, with all of the really important things that are happening in our world, our culture, the Western civilization, is losing its grasp on reality. It's descending into immorality and moral darkness. We're at the point where men and women in schools, the children and teenagers and college young adults don't even know or are confused about whether they're men or women, girls or boys. There is massive confusion. There is a lack of moral reasoning like on a scale we've never seen before in this country. There is 
a lack of faith in God and a loss of devotion to the Bible and prayer and lack of church. There is a precipitous fall in devout Christianity in our nation. We're becoming a secularized country and civilization like parts of Europe have already gotten to as far as their spirituality. And we have so many problems, the breakup of the family, the divorcing of men and women, uh, half of all of the divorces end in failure and divorce. Um, over half of the children in this country are being raised by just one of their original parents. There are households of adults who are now living in these unofficial marriage configurations, two men, one woman, one woman, five men, five men, three women. Polyamory is now uh, becoming more prevalent in our society. We already have had uh, certain cities and towns in Massachusetts that have allowed for polyamorous marriages and unions. We have the transgender movement rising where you actually have children who are mutilating their body to try to take on the characteristics of the opposite sex. We have so much mass confusion and outright lies and propaganda in our media and social media and mainstream media. We have so many problems. Wheaton College needs to be that city on the hill and return to the Bible and the priorities of the Bible and put away this this petty stuff, this this ridiculous stuff, this this foolishness that is everywhere. And now it's into the Christian colleges. And I made a video a couple weeks ago about parents beware of sending your children to even Christian colleges. Well, here's just another example. The priorities here, the misprioritization, I should say, is really the striking thing. When you have the president, the senior administrative cabinet, top officials, the board of trustees, and all of these high up official administrative and faculty and student positions, and they're spending their time talking about the wording on a plaque that's 65 years old that's sitting harmlessly in the chapel as a historical monument to the students that died in an effort to reach an unreached people, and you're spending all this time about the wording on that plaque when there are so many other more important things to do, what this shows is a massive misprioritization of time, energy, and resources at Wheaton College. And we need to pray, people, we need to pray that Wheaton and other Christian colleges and seminaries do not waste your time and your money and your resources on this garbage. This is nothing to do with Christianity. This has everything to do with the political correctness, the leftist, socialist uh, movement in our country. And we need to pray that Wheaton College is able to correct itself because if it keeps going down this path, there's not going to be a good end to this thing. Well, I hope that's been a helpful commentary. We'll see you back next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.